So actually, let's um, if you uh, hear perhaps even some somebody to say, we can turn it over to the audience. Um, and why you also talked about um, getting involved with them. Well, we saw we saw the original Paradise Lost um, train, and I saw it when I guess like uh, 2004, 2005, and it just was a film that made us very angry, made us sad, made us feel like there wasn't uh, justice being served to a lot of people involved in this case, and um, so we called Laurie and um, asked her if there's anything we could do, and then sort of led to where we are today. Excellent. Um, and Lori, do you want to see the Lori and of course Damien want to say a few words? Well, yeah. First of all, I just thank everyone for being here tonight. And um, it's a little emotional, so excuse me, but and thank all of these people up here who um, helped me and uh, bring these three men out, and I can't really say anything else. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, thank you, Amy, for making this night possible, and to Peter and Fran. But I'd like to ask the lawyers, what is it that keeps you from not giving up when everything in this movie seemed to be against the moment that we see on the screen in the end? So let me repeat that um, real quick for the audience. Um, it's directed to the lawyers, and the basic question is, is what keeps you from giving up? Um, when it seems like the, the end of the film would never happen. So if you can address that. Uh, Dennis Reardon, uh, my partner Don Horgan, uh, we came into the case for only the last seven years, um, and not nearly as long as Lori and Damien. Um, it, it was often very, very difficult. Um, all of, uh, you're dealing with people who are in pain and suffering through all of this. Um, and, uh, the, I suppose the, the principal engine was that as difficult as it was, uh, we knew there was this extraordinary man and his extraordinary wife who, uh, who uh, were facing you know, far more than we were. It was, a, it was an honor uh, to work on their behalf. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, I guess it was, uh, you know, the, the more we familiarized ourselves with the case and, and looked at what had gone on before and, and kept uh, uh, looking at the new things that were surfacing with Brandon Peter's help and all the investigation. I mean, the, the problems with the trial were so, it was just saturated with, with uh, problems at every level. And every time you turned the corner and looked elsewhere, there was something else that, that was just hard to, to uh, realize ever could have happened during this conduct, the way the police operated, the way the prosecution dug its heels in, the way the judge responded, it was just bad at so many levels. And we knew we had believed always in Damien's innocence, but it, it motivated us always, I think, to try to find a way through this labyrinth. And there were lots of roadblocks, uh, to be sure, and this legal process is so uh, glacial in its pace, but um, we knew that we were, it would, we'd prevail you know, with, with the support of so many people. And this was such a huge effort by so many people uh, that it would happen someday. Um, but we believed in him, and we, we knew that we had a righteous cause, and, and that's what kept us going, I think. Uh, I agree with all of that. Uh, what really kept me going were Lori Davis and Fran Walsh. They were absolutely relentless. They knew everything about the case. Whenever I needed anything, they were right there. They were pushing. They kept me going. <laughs> So 
So the, the question is about Terry Hobbs, and is there a chance at all that there can be a case uh, brought against him despite the judge's um, basic idea that it's, it's a close yeah. case? D despite what you saw on the film, uh, Ellington has also said that he would investigate any legitimate new evidence. Uh, we take him at his word on that. In fact, the new witnesses you saw in the film, their declarations have already been provided to Scott Ellington, and he has agreed to review them and look at them and hopefully take the appropriate action. It's still possible that the right thing can be done here. The Albert plea is a stumbling block, but it's just a speed bump, as somebody said in the movie. Uh, there still are, still are ways to get at it. Great. Um, right up there, yeah. uh, you? Yes. So the question is basically how did Fran and Peter um, work on this given all the other things that they're doing and also a reference to Emily Creatures and uh, a murder in that this is something that you gravitate towards. Well, Fran was on uh, emails to Laurie all night long. I was making movies so we could pay for the defense. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we were, I mean, the, you know, we were, we first met Laurie in New York and, um, and when we were, we were there for the premiere of King Kong. And we'd already been, you know, working with her probably a year, year and a half before then too. So, it's been a long time, long time. But um, Fran's been the person that's been the, the person that has poured hours and hours and hours every day, tens of thousands of emails. Uh, in right here, right? 